Johnson actually hid in a fridge and Rishi Sunak is hiding behind It's a House Matter. And it is... I, I don't know. I don't know why he's doing it. Is it to, I don't know, stem stem the bleeding uh, of party disunity? Is it that? Has he? I think it's for my money anyway. That was the moment when Rishi Sunak didn't show up last night and hasn't even stood anywhere and sat anywhere and given a statement of of any meaning about the committee's findings. I think that's the moment Rishi Sunak. He he might not be aware of this yet, but that's the moment he told me that he knows he's lost the next, the next election. I mean, it's not looking like they're going to win. They, they know what they're up against, but who knows? They might be uh, still in the mood to work hard and try. Um, electorally, I mean. Governance is a different matter. But I think that's the moment it was lost, when Rishi Sunak made himself invisible and mute uh, on a day when he should have been very present with something to say. Penny Mordaunt the leader of the House, House Matter, had something to say. We all owe the committee a debt of gratitude to the work that they have done under, on our instruction, uh, but it is for members to decide whether their, their conclusions are correct or not. This is a, I'm, as the member for Portsmouth North, I will be voting to support the committee's uh, report and recommendations. But all members uh, need to uh, make up their own minds and uh, and others should leave them alone to do so. Theresa May, former Prime Minister, several Prime Ministers ago, had this to say. The decision of the House on this report is important. It is important to show the public that there is not one rule for them and another for us. Indeed, I believe we have a greater responsibility than most to uphold the rules and to set an example. The decision also matters to show that Parliament is capable of dealing with members who transgress the rules of this House, if you like, to show the sovereignty of Parliament. <laughs> and following an unsettling period in our political life, support for the report of the Privileges Committee will be a small but important step in restoring people's trust in members of this House and of Parliament. And I also say to members of my own party, that it is doubly important for us to show that we are prepared to act when one of our own, however senior, is found wanting. I will vote in favour of the report of the Privileges Committee. I urge all members of this House to do so, to uphold standards in public life, to show that we all recognise the responsibility we have to the people we serve, and to help to restore faith in our parliamentary democracy. A small but important step in restoring trust in Parliament, uh, said Theresa May. This is what Labour's Jess Phillips said. I think it is a crying shame that in this moment of release valve that the Prime Minister of our country cannot even express how he would vote if he were to turn up today. In my view, that is a dereliction of duty. Democracy has been degraded. It is important to fight for it. I cannot believe that he couldn't take five seconds out of parroting his pledges to tell us what he thinks should happen. I cannot believe, and I absolutely praise the Leader of the House today for showing leadership in this regard. Um, I cannot believe that the Prime Minister cannot even express what his view is one way or another. Rishi Sunak's absence reinforces something that went on for far too long in Parliament. Uh, they got there in the end. Uh, via the Privileges Committee year-long investigation into what Boris Johnson said uh, to Parliament about the parties during lockdown. But the truth is it was never just... I mean, the, the reality is it's not just about the parties in lockdown. The Prime Minister, when he was Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, it, it lied so often and so instinctively and so reflexively that to many people it stopped mattering. It stopped mattering whether or not you told the truth in conversation as an elected member of the House of Commons, as a prime minister, as a minister. It's why people like Nadim Zahawi, James Cleverley, 
MP after MP after MP last year could come out and dance on the head of a pin to defend everything he had said ever. It's why Rishi Sunak felt when he became Prime Minister himself that he could talk in glowing terms about Boris Johnson and get away with it. Well, he won't get away with it. Um, so compromised are these people in their judgment, not all of them clearly, or not all Conservative MPs, but so compromised are some of those leading lights of the cabinets of the last couple of years. They're so compromised and their judgment is so compromised. My guess is that some of them no longer know what to think. They no longer know what to think because they have allowed themselves to be misshapen by the lies of Boris Johnson time and time and time again. And it way predates Partygate. The lies he told about Hillsborough, the lie which had already been completely disproved. The lies he told about Hillsborough, the lies he told about Brexit and the outcomes of various strands of Brexit. Uh, the most, the one that most notably comes to mind, or the two that most notably come to mind, are the NHS claims on the side of the bus and the uh, red tape in Northern Ireland to Northern Ireland business men and women. If you have an extra page of red tape, you bring it to me, I'll sort it out for you. In the end, Rishi Sunak sorted it out for them. Uh, by changing the agreement, by introducing uh, the Windsor framework, by fixing the very thing that he had uh, partaken in the destruction of. Every time Boris Johnson said the rules uh, were not broken, the guidance had been followed at all times. Every time he lied about the Owen... Uh, Owen uh, I forgot, Patterson, apologies, I forgot his surname, the Owen Patterson saga, every time he lied about that... People sat on their hands on the Tory benches and went out into radio and television studios to defend the lies. So no wonder some of them, and I'm afraid that list includes Rishi Sunak, no wonder some of them don't want to look in that particular mirror. But we have to look in that mirror. And, and I know, and the reason I said it at the very beginning of the programme, I know that at the moment our day-to-day -day concerns about paying our bills and rent, mortgages, cost of living crisis, the cost of food, the cost of heating. I know that those naturally dominate our thoughts day to day. But Theresa May, when she spoke yesterday, was right to say that that vote yesterday was an important step in restoring trust in Parliament. And if the Prime Minister of the day and hundreds of his colleagues can't be bothered to not just show up but in the case of Rishi Sunak, not tell you what he thinks about the findings against Boris Johnson. Not tell you what he thinks about the fact of the lies of Boris Johnson, let alone what the committee has said, but what he believes about lying in Parliament. He won't look in that mirror because he knows at some level he's part of it. That's why he won't look in that mirror. And, and, and while I know that day-to-day -day concerns, all of our day-to-day -day concerns, feel like they matter more, or do matter more uh, in, in the present time, um, if we don't call out, and provably, I mean, call out people lying in Parliament and in public life, it normalises lying in Parliament and public life. We've seen it happen. Loads of those MPs that didn't turn up last night know that they've been dishonest for years. They put him there. They tried to keep him there. Boris Johnson. Rishi Sunak is one of them. They know they did it. And they can't look in that mirror. They won't look in that mirror.